and the person next to you, you know, right answer, oh, great job, John, you did it, great answer. High five, you're thinking to yourself, dang it, I knew that answer. But you're just afraid to raise your hand. Or you, what about the, you know, guy in the room? Maybe you were afraid to ask that punk girl out on a date. And then she's going out with your best friend. Eee, something like that happens. It's because we doubt ourselves, right? Go ahead and click it, Gina. So why do we have those things, and why does it creep up into our businesses? One, I think, could be personal, um, we've heard it actually, they are physical appearance, right? We're not to the point where we think we should be that somebody want to listen to us. We're not the one that get up, can get up on the stage in a swimsuit competition. So why would somebody want to have me as their coach? Or we don't have the professional training. We're not a nutritionist, we're not a dietitian. Maybe we don't have that background. We've been doing it for a while, so we know some things to do, but why on earth would they want me to be their coach? I just, it's hard for me to imagine that they'd want to do that. And then maybe, again, you're not a person, uh, per what, is, what am I saying, a personal development guru. Uh, you don't have all the motivational skills to inspire somebody to keep them going, or at least that's your perception of yourself, right? I've done that to myself too. Like, just why would they listen to me? Or, again, Gina talked about having some businesses in the past. I did it, I tried prepaid legal. It was one of these marketing, network marketing companies, right? And I did horribly at it because I was not passionate about selling legal plans. So I didn't want to talk to somebody about that. Like, I, I love the, like, I went to, I even went to tour their conferences, their national conferences, but it wasn't exciting for me. The conferences are great, the personal development, absolutely. Jim Rohn, we got to hear from a lot of great people. Zig Ziglar was there. We got to do that. So I love that side of it, but I wasn't passionate about what I was selling, so it didn't work for me. So what are some other ones? Anybody got any other ideas of self-doubt or reasons why you might doubt yourself? Nobody? <laughs> you guys are good. You better be all diamonds by like next month, right? <laughs> appearance, so, appearance. Appearance, I put that one up there, yeah, yeah. Yes, other people, other people putting you down. I understand that, yeah. Right, again. How about you, right? Indeed, right, that's a great one. So these are definitely some reasons uh, why we might doubt ourselves and what we can do with the business and in our own fitness journeys and that type of thing. So for me, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about my story, uh, where I came from and what makes me um, have a struggle with this. And my, basically my own personal appearance. It's something that I dealt with all my life. I was a chubby kid. I wasn't big, but I was chubby. I, was always, I always wanted to be that little stick figure person, like no meat on the bones, bones sticking out. The, the runway model, I've always looked at that and that's what I like idolized, I wanted to be that. I've never had that body. And so growing up, like my dad even sang a song, this is ridiculous, but I'm gonna share. So he used to sing a song to me as I was a kid growing up and he thought it was like a um, expression of endearment, if you will, right? But he sang Patty Fatty, two by four, couldn't fit through the bathroom door so she peed on the floor. And I'd hear that like all the time and it was ridiculous, but, and he was trying to like love on me with that um, alcoholic, just, just not a great childhood with that part of thing, but I, it really like set in that I was always a fat girl. Like I always thought I was even, even, you know, and when I was 13, he said something again, like, oh, you're gaining weight, you know? And I finally went off on him at that point, so I was 13 and, you know, I was vocal. So I shared with him that I didn't appreciate that and that's not the way you talk to a young lady because of what we go through. And so I was anorexic for, I don't know, half a year or something in high school. I was a size five and still thought I was fat. What's wrong with us? So, yeah, now I look back and go, please let me get back to that. Yeah. Anyway, so nonetheless, those kind of things creep up. And so even with my coaching, it's hard for me to believe, like, why would somebody want to do, to listen to me? So go ahead and click the next couple slides. So I got really involved with, with uh, our business here. And this is my own little journey. Stop there. Oh, I'll go back. So this is my first journey and I just went through, I started getting involved, so I yo yo like I said, I did Insanity and then I kind of did my own thing for a while and I kind of played with P90X, but I didn't do it like kind of like Ryan said. And so then I started getting serious and I did Chalene Extreme after going to um, Summit and because that got me jazzed. I, I signed up, I went to Summit. I wasn't really coaching at that time. I signed up as a discount coach and I was out for like two years or something, a little bit more probably. And then I started really getting involved in my own fitness and so it wasn't until after doing these two programs 
about after P90X in November was when I really started to get serious, uh, December 2012. Click the next one. So I did pretty good. Um, this is when I was in the best shape of my life, just a, a little bit later, May 30th, 2013. I want to say I had had two surgeries at this point. So you can click the next one. Since then, I've had five more. So, sidelines. That's where I came up with sideline. I was doing great, I was feeling good. I became a diamond coach back then. Um, I wanna say it was like in May that I became the diamond coach. I was doing really good. And since then I've had five more surgeries. And it really sidelined me and you see my stomach. I mean, it sidelined me. I'd sit on the end of my, Gina's heard my story, Ryan. I've talked to a few people. Mike, my coach has fed into me because he's a life coach as well a little bit. And um, I've been sidelined guys. Like it's hard for me sometimes even still to believe that somebody would want me to be their coach. I'm back up two sizes from where I was from that last previous picture. And that is really hard for me to post something on Facebook and to post something on Facebook and be proud of myself and confident that somebody's gonna look at that and want to have me as their coach. It's a struggle and it happens to us. We're gonna go in and out of these things. It's gonna happen in your business. It could happen um, somehow in your life other than your business, but it's gonna sideline you. Cause these had nothing to do with my business, but yet your, your business is you. You're supposed to be a product of the product. I'm doing Pio, but I'm not losing any weight, right? So click the next one for me. So that was three weeks ago. I'm glad to say I got my head back. I got my head back in the game. This was just last night. So you can see I'm getting it back. It's only five pounds down, but uh, I'm in it. We're doing it. share the story to like to get the applause or to make you feel sorry for me and my situation that I'm going through sure because it's gonna sometimes life happens and I want you guys to see that and that you can get back in it even when life happens so you can overcome self-doubt go ahead and click so see this is some of the ways that I've overcame it and I just want to share with you because this is what our business is all about you're gonna see the three vital behaviors pop up through this because it's seriously if I wasn't a beach body coach after seven surgeries I don't know if I'd still be here I don't know if I'd be doing this thing, but I know that other people are looking up to me and I'm helping other people. Even through this, I'm still getting success club five and people want to work with me, even when I couldn't figure out why. So you can still do it, and I just say do it anyway. So some of the things to overcome self-doubt, personal development, positive self-talk, loving yourself, taking action, and definitely believing in yourself. Believing. So how to overcome it. So with personal development, I just can't say enough about it. It's one of our three vital behaviors. We're supposed to be doing it every day, at least 10 minutes of a book. I drive all day long for work, so I am a, like an audiobook junkie. I have it on my phone. I just have it going when I'm in the car. So it's one way to feed into yourself. It's definitely the personal development, which definitely leads into the positive self-talk, right? We start hearing those things. You write them down. You memorize them. You internalize them. And then you talk to yourself. Seriously, when you're in the mirror, talk to yourself. Tell yourself I'm beautiful. Tell yourself I can do this thing. Like, I am a diamond coach, whatever it might be. I don't like to like, get stuck on rank, but whatever your goal is, hey, you have it, and act like you've already achieved it. Go ahead and click. This is just a, a little, if you guys wanted to see this diagram later, I just kind of pulled this up because it, it made sense to what the talk was about, but you can click through that one to save time. Love yourself, guys. Love yourself. So when this first started about three weeks ago, when I was really hit my all-time low, and not all-time, I'm sure, but this recent um, sidelined event, I, uh, at the same time, I really get plugged in my church and stuff, and it's funny because my friend had me go to an event I didn't want to go to because I didn't fit any of my clothes. I was having a moment. Like, I don't want to go. I'm not going to look good. Like, I don't feel good. Like, I don't want to do it. And so I went to this event anyways, and they're starting a new Bible study, and it fits along with all of our personal development as well, and it's called Shape. Huh. Interesting. God's good, right? So just something about loving yourself, and something I always try to talk, talk to myself in the mirror about is that we're a masterpiece, that God's created us to be a masterpiece, and we are his masterpiece built in his image. So you are a special creation of God Almighty made in his own image so your life can make a significant difference in his kingdom. He doesn't create anything without value. I'm just picking out a couple things. God or it says, you are a work of God, but nothing and nothing but the highest and best comes from his hands. Only you can be you. So just some very first things about the first chapter. We're not even on it yet, but I opened it that day because I thought, what is this book about? It just fed into me. This was three weeks ago when I got my head back in the game. And it was because I had something to read that was 
really helped me to love myself again and realize that. So this is something I came up with in a different leadership training class that I had done. We had to give a presentation. And so this is my little saying for myself. So I got my own Zig Ziglar saying, right? This is mine. But action plus belief creates your destiny. So it's just something I, I put together for the ABC's of success and leadership, but it definitely fits in perfect with what, what we're talking about here. So action, do it anyways. If you don't feel like doing it, do it anyways. I didn't want to post a picture of myself working out on Facebook because I'm 17 pounds still, 17 pounds plus the five that I just lost, heavier than I was. But I did it anyway. The people still respond to the post. They still see you're doing it. They're like, I can do it too. If she can do it, I can do it. Like, we can do this thing. We have amazing training set up. Continue to go through the trainings. Mike Ryan has a training on the Team Victory website for brand new coaches. We have our other trainings, the boot camps that we put on. Aaron's I've heard is phenomenal. I'd love to see it. Gina has one. I have one for my team. Like, we all have these wonderful trainings. You need to get plugged in so you know what you're talking about when you're out there. And then, if you need it, get a pep talk. The person, if you don't have anybody to get one from, which I use a few people in this room to help me and mine, but um, go to the personal development books, I mean, just, just dig in there and then act like you've already succeeded. Walk high instead of like that, you know, oh my gosh, you know, put your shoulders back, let yourself off and get up and go, like do the thing. And stop comparing yourselves to others. I will never be the runway model. Like that's just not the build that I have. Stop doing that to yourselves. Is that something that you struggle with? Like, you don't think you're going to look like Arnold if that's not your build. Like, there's different things we have to focus on and be the best version of us. We talk about that. You just got to be the best version of us. And something Mike Ryan used to say to me, and I always loved it, is he always says, I wish you could see yourself through my eyes. And that is just so phenomenal. He always said that, and it, you know, it's stuck with me, and I've actually shared that now with my coaches as well. Like, I wish you could see yourself through my eyes and have the confidence that I have in you. So it's just something that's just real positive. Believe, believe in yourself, guys. You gotta believe in yourself. Believe in the products. We know they work. Be a product of the product. That's pretty much what that means, right? That's a vital behavior of ours. And be sincere when you're out there sharing these things. You have to be sincere and just meet people where they're at. And just be yourself where you're at and just, you know, be real with somebody. They're going to understand if you're going through struggles too. Sometimes that's what they want to do is connect with somebody who's on their level. They don't want the business model when they're like 50, 100 pounds overweight. Like that's going to, to deter them. They're going to be um, intimidated by it. Just meet people where they're at. And believe in a higher purpose. Of course, you guys know what mine have shared, but believe that there's a higher purpose that even on those days when you can't do it, that somebody else is going to give you the strength to get through it. Something else. And then uh, believe in the mission. We have a mission with this company and it's to end the trend of obesity and help people live happier, more healthy, fulfilling lives. And that's what we're here for, right? We're here to do that, fill that mission. Go ahead. So this is something I wanna leave you with. Sean T shared this, not this year at Summit, but last year, right after our super workout. It was phenomenal. I caught a tiny glimpse of it, a bit of it, and so, this is something about loving you for you, and I want to leave you guys with this. Oh, hold on, hold on, we gotta plug in. 